Ba-dow! All right, so hey guys, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the exciting, thrilling, and always exciting world of culture. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what culture is and why it's important. Uh, what does it have in common with yogurt? Well, yogurt is made with live cultures, and that's what really makes it so amazing. <laughs> culture is alive, and that's what makes it beautiful. Um, it's the way we live, it's developed by us, and it's spread on from generation to generation. And we have to feed it and share it for it to continue to live. And as much as it sucks, we can also lose our culture and heritage by sanitizing it and outsourcing it. <laughs> Why make something yourself when you can buy it for $20 at Walmart? To illustrate my point, let's go to Japan, like all of my talks do, and talk a little bit about the kimono. Did you know the kimono's been around for 1,200 years? 1,200 years. It's, this history goes back as far as 800 AD. And it's not just about the garment itself, but a lot about what makes the kimono so culturally rich is how it's made. Each different type of pattern means something, and it can be woven into the fabric, and painted, embroidered, but it's all still done by hand. And the majority of traditional Japanese kimonos are still made this way over a thousand years later. It's pretty amazing. And that's what's really impressive, is that kimonos have held up as a cultural staple of Japan, even though they're mostly worn for special occasions now. It's a huge marker for their identity, and it's important that the original traditions of their creation stay the same. Now, to become a used an artisan and be considered a master of your craft, you have to apprentice for 11 years. That's longer than going to med school. And you don't go to school for it. You study under a master. Um, and they teach you and the traditional skills so that you can then pass them on to the next student that you could take on under you. But these skills are at risk of being lost. The average age of kimono-related artisans is 80 years old, and where these take on 30 apprentices, now they're getting less than 10. The younger generation isn't interested in spending time to learn traditional ways of creating things that are so vital to their culture. It's not outrageous to think in 50 years that could, it could be lost forever, and you're seeing it all over the world. People want to go into industries that are faster to learn and more profitable. You can buy a good now for less money than you can make it, and if it falls apart, whatever, who cares? You can buy another one. It's a $6 shirt from Mossimo. It's not something you pass on to your kids. So now we're appreciating quantity over quality, which is the opposite of what it used to be before because we were all artisans. Let's talk about jeans for a second. Jeans are one thing that are 100% American. It's our kimono. They were created in the 1800s in San Francisco, and in 2003, Levi's transferred all manufacturing overseas. It's been outsourced to India, China, and Vietnam, and this is something that we wear almost every day. They know more about manufacturing the art and craftsmanship of something that is ours than we do. So let's talk a minute about what artisans and craftsmen and tradesmen are. It's essentially all words for the same thing. Somebody who makes a product by hand, who's skilled in the traditional way of making something. It can be sewing, throwing pottery, building a house, but in all cases, it's a person who puts the care, knowledge, and practice into making something and making it well. And that's the beauty of an artisan. An artisan isn't a hobbyist who just pokes at something when they have time. They have passion and desire to learn everything there is to be learned about their craft. They study the history. They want to learn the way things are made so that they can make them properly. They spend hours honing and improving their craft to the point that they're anal retentive about the process, and you have to have that to really be a true artisan. Learning to do things the traditional way is a beautiful way to make sure that the skills of our previous generations don't disappear. Artisans are the heralds of our culture. They sing the praises of our past, and they make sure the cultures and traditions of our past aren't lost forever because they could be. But good news, it doesn't have to be this way. You too can be an artisan and keep culture alive. It's actually really easy in concept. So take advice from this man and get yourself a discipline. <laughs> Learn to do something and if it has some cultural relevance to you, start there. Make a table, bake a cake from scratch, learn to river dance, but really geek out about it. Learn the process, the history, and relevance of why things are done in a specific way and do it. <laughs> and it may not turn out great the first time. In fact, it's probably gonna totally suck. But be proud of it because you used your hands and your heart and your brain to appreciate how something was made. And once you find something that resonates with your heart, and it's probably going to take a few times, you'll want to keep doing it and you'll want to get better. And you'll also appreciate the craftsmanship and dedication that has gone into everything that surrounds you. But you're not done yet. Mostly because once you start becoming an artisan of something, you're never going to want to stop. That love and passion is never gonna die, but it's important to take these skills we've learned and pass them on to somebody else. By passing on the knowledge and skills that we've accumulated, we've ensured that parts of our culture are never gonna die. You can find me here. I'm an artisan in my own right, and um, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you. <laughs>